everyone's making this really hard on me because um they keep handing me candy and sugar and i'm trying to be good and i just got like christmas cake and a homemade candy i mean how do you refuse that <laughs> trying to be good it's not working well how are you guys doing good nice little small crowd it's where i'm like i would like you guys all to like come on let's all just be friends <laughs> well i'll introduce myself i'm meredith mccoy and i've been a voice actor for the last 22 years um i kind of stumbled into it funny enough i was a actor um and i was doing some theater shows funny enough and dr Giro, uh was my director and he said um course his name's not Dr. Giroux, my director, but um he played the character of Dr. Giroux and he said, Hey Mayor, like Mayor and uh Laura Bailey, he was like, You guys should go audition for this. They're looking for some female characters. And so um we said, All right, we'll try it out. You know, I had no idea what I was walking into that day. Um so walked into a small little and well it wasn't a small a bank building on uh the like seventh floor or something and chris sabbat and justin cook were the engineers and the director and auditioned for android 18 and i promise they probably booked me over laura because i have blonde hair and look like android 18 and that, <laughs> everybody saw i was like wait you played android 18 did they model the character after you and i was like no they wrote it like 10 years before i would have been like 10 years old. So <laughs> I don't think they modeled it after me. So played Android 18 first, and then it became a very small world, you know, where once you're in, um, we just started uh, auditioning for all the things that came in. And so did the character um, at Suko in Yu Yu Hakusho, was Kagura in Fruits Basket, was um, Fujiko in Lupin the Third. Anybody know that one? That one's kind of a... Um, Kagura in Fruits Basket. Let's see what else? R L Lieutenant Maria Ross in Full Metal Alchemist. And I'm sure I've done some other characters that I'm forgetting at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'd love to answer any questions that you guys may have, or if there's anything like talk about this, I would love to know more about that. I will do my best to answer any of your questions or give you any feedback that you're maybe wanting to know. You guys have any questions? Anything? burning on the top of your mind. Yeah. Cheat day. Probably anything with a ton of breads and dips and chips and queso and then a ton of, I mean, I've got a sweet tooth too. So give me a bakery. Honestly, my, um, my dream I've always told my husband is like, I want to go on one of those cruises that have really high end chefs competing. And I want to judge <laughs> or at least taste the, <laughs> taste the fruit of their competitions. I'm like, come on, that sounds really fun. Don't, doesn't it? Wouldn't you want to be one of those where they make really fancy food and you get to try it all? You've done that. See, that's not fair. I would be down for that. Really good sushi. I love really good sushi too. But I feel like Georgia doesn't have really good sushi. So we're not really by, I mean, I guess you're kind of by an ocean. But... Yeah, that would be that. What else, guys? What, you, what else you got? Yeah. Favorite memorable roles. Honestly, one of my most favorite, well, I mean, Android 18 is always going to be one of my favorite roles, but launch. Launch in Dragon Ball is such a character, you know, just because she's a blonde, hot-tempered girl with a machine gun, but she's also super sweet. And when she sneezes, she turns into the her alter ego. Um, so, you, you know, to get to play both of those characters is super fun. Oh, and with that, um, she's kind of got a Brooklyn accent, the launch, the tough launch. I modeled her after my roommate in college. 
she's this she was this beautiful blonde girl so feisty like if you told her she's pretty she'd like flip you off and like start cussing you out and so i'd have to be like it's okay we're nice in texas so I'd, I'd like be like coming out behind her like no 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 she's very nice sorry sorry about that <laughs> like they're like you're so hot and she'd be like <laughs> so she'd go off on people so that was blonde launch my inspiration was my from philly roommate <laughs> Yeah, so that was probably one of my funnest characters. Kagura, Fruits Basket, she was also a character that um, was super fun. She was kind of similar in the sense that she was super sweet until she was not and went berserko. And I, I was said yesterday, I was like, I've been cast as two of these characters. Should I be worried? Why do I keep getting like these <laughs> characters that go crazy? I'm not sure if they're trying to tell me something or not. Easiest one to pull off? Um, that is a good question. So Android 18 is the easiest on my voice in the sense that she's just low. She's got a lot of one-liners. But then when she does a lot of fighting, that's always hard. Just because it's hard on your voice, not because it's hard. Woo! Gosh, if I knew. And like, and I think I said to some of you guys yesterday, too, the the problem was that I wasn't very secure in my acting at the time. And so every time I would do like a, ha, hoo, ha, I'd laugh. I'd go, ha. <laughs> he's like, Meredith, you're ruining the day because you're laughing after every punch, you know, don't do that. Or then, and then also in the beginning, learning, like having to make sounds that aren't like sounds that you're like, they're like, make a landing sound. You're like, a landing sound. Or like, make a running sound. You're like, running sound. You know, okay. So you're in there like, <laughs> you know? so you have to do all of those kinds of things that you don't normally ever think about. If I'm running, I don't normally make that noise. I don't know about you guys. You could do your best running noise. It's not usually, <laughs> but you know, it, it's super sweet. Exactly. All the attacks, all the different types of attacks. Um, I'd say video games are the most interesting in that way because you're having to do all the attacks and then get hit oh I'm just seeing android 18 right there hello i love it um you know you're doing all the different attacks um and you have to die you have to hit you have to win you have to you know and it's all in a row so now it's a lot easier because you'll get to hear the japanese versions it'll be like hey yeah and then you're like okay hey yeah <laughs> you get to just do it and i love to i love imitating so it makes it super Super easy and fun. And then you also don't have to match your mouth because they'll make it off of your own. So the video games are easier in that in that sense. No, they actually you actually get to see the scenes now. Like um when I first started, you'd get to see a little bit, but it was very hard to do because again it was tape. That says dates me how old I am, but it was tape. And so it, you'd have to rewind the tape and it would be this whole thing. So you'd get to see it sometimes, but for the most part, um, you're just having to give it a go every time. I don't know if you guys know the, the formula with it. I'm sure people have told you, but basically you'll watch it. And as it's going, there's three beeps on, on the fourth beat where the beep should be is when you start. So it kind of helps you give the timing you know, and usually when you get really good script writers, you know, they'll they'll do the words where it helps match the mouth flaps. But like in the early days, it'd be like you're like, oh, be quiet, you know, and so you'd read it like that. And then you realize the mouth flaps are more like, oh, be quiet. <laughs> you know, and you're like you're having to stretch it out or there's just a lot of timing things that you have to learn because you don't want to, you know, you can't be off because then you guys would be mad. You'd be like, why can't they match the mouth flaps? <laughs> But make, the digital age has made it very, uh, so much easier and take way less time um, because everything can be moved and, and changed and stretched and quickened and all that kind of stuff. So it's made it a lot easier. It was a lot harder in the old, olden days with our scripts and they would like, we'd have to write the lines in if it wasn't long enough or you'd have to add something in. So it was a lot, a lot harder work back then. It sounds like my, I feel like I'm like the grandma going, we used to have to 
walk uphill, <laughs> bringing our water from the well to the house. <laughs> yeah, it, it totally. So that's, yeah, it was, it was a lot of that. Um, but yeah, and then the early days too, with all the fight scenes and stuff like that, you know, you're in a little booth and the air conditioning wasn't that great in it and you had to turn it off. And so you'd be doing all these fight scenes for hours and be sweating in there. Woo. So that was always fun too. Cause you can't do fight scenes and not move. I mean, like I have to have all you guys stand up and like try to do fight noises and not move your body at all and see how well it goes. <laughs> So I was telling them yesterday, they, for a while there, they had cameras in the booth so that they could, because we didn't have a good window where we could see the director. And I was like, you guys are going to use this as blackmail. Like, this is, we look like idiots <laughs> doing these voices. And, you know, you'll be playing a little girl character and you're like, <laughs> you know, you try to get into a little girl. And anyway, any other questions on that? Yeah. Um, almost all of it's scripted, but a lot of times the timing will be off and we'll have to add things. Um, we'll have to add lines or like words or take away words or like try to say it differently. Sometimes it won't make sense. So they'll, um, they'll change it like on the spot. And so you'll help with that some, especially if you know the character well. If it's, I mean, you know, if it's Chris Sabat directing and it's Andrew at 18, like he knows her just as well as I do. So we'll kind of come up with lines together. Um, but usually they have pretty good script writers now and, you know, it goes pretty fast. Any other questions in regards to voice acting or characters? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I think that for the most part, they don't give you a whole lot of synopsis, you know, beforehand. But like, I think afterwards, when you realized you've gotten to go on certain arcs with characters, kind of a hero's journey or, you know, turn, like, again, like Android 18 being the kind of iconic one of villain, you know, that actually turns into a good guy, still has her spunky personality, um, you know those kind of heroes journeys arcs you know and then you get to know them and then they have conflicts in other directions with like the brother that's gone rogue you know or or whatever those so i would that that character you know always has had the most interesting arc just because i've got to be the horrible bad guy turned into a good guy with some sass um yeah but the other characters you know i mean like i feel like are more minor characters well maria ross is not a minor but as much of a minor character, but I'd have to think through um, in the hero's journey. But I've been studying that a lot because my husband is a producer and has been doing um, some movies and working on some things. And so he's worked on it. He just released his first documentary. And within that, we've been learning and studying, you know, how to put things together as the hero's journey or from that arc. It's going to be soon. So it was in theaters. Um, a limited time for like just a couple weeks um it's called super spreader it's a documentary kind of on covid like the whole that whole journey um through a guy whoop, through a guy of religious freedom and so it's pretty fascinating actually um it was kind of the only uh musical tour on the planet during covid so it's it's a it's good documentary um but i think it should be on netflix they're they're negotiating that within the next few uh, months so hopefully I knew nothing so and and that's partly too which what's fascinating and not fat I mean it's fascinating but I would say Walking into these characters and roles, you'll get a small synopsis when you audition, kind of what the character is about, a little about their personality, but it's very, very limited. And then what they'll do right after that is they'll just kind of give you what's happening before and what's going to happen after. So you don't get a whole lot of insight. You don't have a lot of, you have to really trust your director, especially if you're the first one in the booth. 
where you're not playing off of any other characters that have already voiced because you're in there alone. You're not with other characters. So um, it's really fun whenever you get to be the last one because then you're actually getting getting to act in the sense of playing off of other characters and what they said and how they said it. But a lot of times you're in there, you're the first one to voice it and you have to just trust the director that he knows what they're going to say and how they're going to say it so that it all flows well. So there is a real art to having to do the cartoons and the the voices and having a really good director is key. Let me think. Which one did I have? Absolutely have to watch. I, I think I watched I think I watched Fruits Basket was one of the ones that I did watch all the way through. And then um, I actually, it was really fun. The last Dragon Ball Z movie that came out, um, I brought my brother who we look, ex we look so much alike. So I was like, how fun is that? Like, you know, Android 17, and like my brother and I just look so much alike. So we got to go to the premiere together in LA. Um, and then I brought my kids. That was the first Dragon Ball Z thing they've ever seen all the way. So um, that was a really fun and a little fun intro to um, Dragon Ball Z. My kids being like, that's you, mom? That's me. Like all their friends have just started watching Dragon Ball Z because they're, you know, like 10 and 11. And they're like, wow, your mom is, your mom is so cool. They're like, my mom is so cool. <laughs> you know? They don't think of me as, as, as so cool. So any other questions? Any other thoughts? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's brave. Yeah. Man, do I have any, I don't know if I have any rituals. I think more than anything, I do vocal warmups. Does that count? Yeah. Oh, I believe it. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. Yeah, no, I think that I I think always just preparing a, with a depending on how long the session is and what all you're going to be doing is like how much throat coat tea do I have? Uh, you know, making sure that because I mean, I did a video game recently and I didn't have any lines. It was all screaming. It was all fighting, moving things. I mean, which I always think is funny again too. Like, all right, this one you're going to be moving a box. A heavy box. <laughs> like, okay yeah so they're so you're just in there you're gonna and they're like great that was awesome now do it five more times all right <laughs> you know so then you move a heavy box five times and use it yep that's true because your responses sometimes can totally make it Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, I don't know if I have super rituals other than just like vocal health, you know, because it is super important because I also am a, um, a singer and I used to travel with a band for years. And so I would be traveling and singing sometimes five or six nights and then go in and have a, a voiceover session where you're doing fight scenes. You know, that's really hard. So I had a vocal coach at that point who was really kind of helping me to try to stay as healthy as I possibly could so I could do all the things vocally that I was needing to do at the time, especially because Android 18, you know, she's very smooth. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to be super scratchy for certain things. So, A favorite scene. One of my favorite scenes, honestly, we just laughed so hard. Well, actually, you can't even hear it as much as the movie that we just did. But um, me and Krillin, I have this huge argument with the other android about Krillin coming home with me. And he was like, oh, don't let him go with her. And she was like, that's my husband. And she was like screaming at him. Like we had this whole banter back and forth about he's my husband and he's coming to my house and to the, you know, like to my couch. <laughs> so, but you don't really get to hear it in the movie, but we were dying laughing at like Krillin getting back and forth um that one is a fun one um the other one was just him flying off and me being like he's so cool and just having those like really 
those little one-liner moments of Krillin. <laughs> but yeah, he's she's had a lot of fun scenes. She just gets so mad, you know, and then she's shopping. So <laughs> she is super cool. I mean, she's way cooler than I am. <laughs> to be my pretend alter ego and be cool for a minute then going back to being me <laughs> and we haven't actually well he's not my twin but we look like twins like we look so much alike so i know we totally should that's why i made him come with me to the to the premiere because i was like i mean come on it's like 17 and 18 freaking so and he's actually he uh he does kung fu and has done kung fu for years and then he's he's like the really cool brother like that beat me at everything growing up so you know it is super awesome yeah he does all the like slack lining mountain climbing he's crossfitter all the fun things that i aspire to be <laughs> any other questions yeah Ooh. Good question. I think that one was a, I think I said it yesterday too, is, was a little bit more of a challenging role because she's not my typical characters. You know, the alcoholic mom is not a, a typical character that I play. Having to be shaky and emotional and, and really tap into that was probably one of the more challenging ones, but how did I get that role? Um, I don't even remember the audition, honestly. It, it just became one of those things where, you know, they begin to trust you as an actor um, and so I think I read for the role and then they just, they cast me as it, but it was one of those things that, um, it, like I said, it became a very small pool of actors of people that they trust. Do you show up? Do you do a good job? Do you work hard? You know, are you able to, are you not super high maintenance? I'm not too high maintenance. <laughs> um, yeah. And so that one was a, that was a fun role for sure. And challenging. Any other questions, comments? Um, I actually, funny enough, I have not auditioned in a really long time. They've sent me a few things recently and I've been like, hmm, should I? Partly because I was so busy with what else I do, you know, with a, as a singer and songwriter and all that stuff. That's been my main role and focus. Um, and so I haven't done a whole lot. But now that there's remote studios and I'm learning that whole game, I've thought about possibly throwing in some auditions for things and I've stayed close to Chris and Sonny and all those guys. So. Um, I would say my first passion is definitely going to be music and songwriting and all of that. That's just like what I love, love, love to do. And then, but I, it's funny, you will find that a lot of the voice actors are also singers or musicians or really appreciate music. And I think that there's a singability and there's a lot of um, being in, someone who can sing and who can um, really articulate, I mean, not articulate, who can really um, do a lot with their voice helps with voice acting because so much of it is tonal. So like being able to imitate different styles and um, sounds. I mean, I started out singing jazz when I was young. So everything that I did was um, here I go again, I hear those trumpets blow again, all the glow again, taking a chance on love. You know, so it was that very like jazzy style. That's not what I normally sing like, but it was like a style that I was able to do. So I started out singing with that kind of stuff. And then, I mean, I could do country, I could do pop, I could do whatever style you wanted. So it's funny how it seamlessly flows into voice acting. And, you know, the different tones that you choose for the characters that become their thing and the way they articulate. So, yeah, I love music. Love what I do. Yeah, I think if you learn how to correctly sing, then you'll be able to correctly uh, not hurt yourself as bad when you're screaming because you're using your diaphragm, you're using your stomach, you're not going to be scratching as much unless you're purposely doing it. There's a lot of things tonally that you can use as a singer. That, I mean, I took voice lessons for, oh gosh, probably 10 years. 
um, as a singer, but how that translated into voice acting, I think I was able to be healthier. I've been able to, like, I can sustain it longer because of being able to use my diaphragm, using your breathing well, and knowing how to place things tonally, because so much of it is about tone and placement, where you put things. If I'm going to be doing, oh, it's so dusty in here, and I just washed my hand. <laughs> you know, like, I know tonally where I'm able to place that versus my very low characters. And I think that all goes in with singing as well. But, and then all your vocal warm ups and all those things just help you stay healthy and have lots of range. So, and range is good. Then you're not just playing one style of character. Any other questions? Yeah. I mean, I feel super sad that Launch didn't come back more and that the the writer actually forgot about her. <laughs> like, how do you forget that character? It was funny because she came back in a video game not too long ago and we were we were doing some of the lines and the director was like, this is so sad that she, she needs to come back so much more because she was such a fun character. So we just laughed and laughed at her, at her lines and her sass. So she's one of the ones that I think would be really fun. Um, I think I mentioned this yesterday. It's not, it's kind of on the lines of your question, but like my biggest regret character wise that I wasn't able to do is that um, I didn't get to come back for Kagura in Fruits Basket um, because it didn't work out with my schedule. They called me about it and I was like, oh, I was really trying to figure it out, but I was already traveling so much. I wasn't going to be able to make the window, I don't think. And so I, I canceled and I was like, oh, I should have tried harder because I loved that character. It was a really fun role. So, yeah. <laughs> That's probably true. That is very true. Looking at all the wrong places, for sure. All right, I think we got time for one more question. Yeah. So I always tell my director, I'm always like, I do not mind line reads. I do not. So some actors are very picky and they're like, don't tell me what to do. Don't have, like, this is my character. I want to do it how I want to do it. So they'll, they'll try to be very sensitive to, to go, okay, you know, uh, maybe try a different way. And they'll just be more open with how they direct with me. I'm like, I want you to tell me what you want. Like, I like it like that. I want to like go quickly in that I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm not offended by direction. I like it. So to me, if you want to give me a line read, if you're hearing something specific, then I'm all about that. So I always tell the director, just tell it to me straight. And then let's, um, so we can do the best that for this character that we possibly can. So I, I don't have my feelings wrapped up to that. That's also goes into songwriting because when you go into songwriting sessions with lots of people and you're writing for somebody else, if they don't like it, you don't want them to not tell you that because it's their song, you know, like it's a, it's a big deal to like, if it's their song, you want them to love it and you're, you're throwing something out and they feel like they can't say no, then they're not going to like that or they're not going to want to sing it anymore. They're going to want to throw that song away. So I feel the same way with acting. I'm like, if you want something specific and you're needing that from me, just tell me what it is. And I'm not going to be offended by that either. I'm just going to, I'm going to give my best to, to, to do what you're needing or what you're hearing, your interpretation of it. Cause my interpretation is not always the right one, you know? So that's where we worked well together. So I'm a, I'm a team player. I like the, I like the team. I appreciate the team. Cause I don't feel like we can always see clearly one-sided. So I, I love all the roles that everybody gets to play and then to play it together. Which is also why you kind of like Dragon Ball Z too. Because you think about it, you know, you got all these characters. They don't always get along. But in the end, they come together to save the world. So they have to figure out how to work together. <laughs> and that's, I feel like, kind of life in general. That's our life lesson. We should all learn to work together <laughs> to save the world. So... There you go. We just it turned into a therapy session. I'm happy to do a therapy session, guys. <laughs> let's get let's go there. How's your heart? <laughs> awesome. How do you feel about that? Tell me more. Awesome. Well, thanks for spending this last 30 minutes with me. And like, feel free to come and talk to me at the the table in a little while. And it's nice to meet you guys. We'll have to hang out some more. So yay. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate you guys. <laughs>